Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining us today for our pre-departure webinar for our January 2024 intake. Um, we will be taking you through quite a bit of information today. The session is recorded, so if any of your internets do drop out, don't worry, we will be sharing the recording over the coming weeks as well. Um, now, we'll also have some features that you can be able to see on your screen. So we've got the chat box, and then there's also a Q&A box as well. If you do want to ask any questions throughout the session to the panelists, please pop your question in the Q&A. You can use the chat to chat to each other just because the chat moves quite quickly and we don't want to risk missing any as well. Um, but my name is Kat um, and I'll be taking you through some of the slides today. Hi everybody, my name's Jess and I'll be going through the slides as well. So me and Jess are here to answer your questions as well. Um, now, just to give you an idea of the type of information we're going to go through. So we've got packing checklists, travel tips, registration guidance, BRP collection, orientation. We'll give you an overview of some of the heart systems and the support networks available to you. And then after the slideshow, that's when we'll be going to Q&A as well. Now with the Q&A, we will be answering some questions typed as we go. So do check out the typed questions um, section as well, because you might find that somebody has already asked the question that you are interested as well. And then you can see the answer there that either me or Jess will have typed. And just before we start, um, we're just going to do a poll. So you can feel free to join in if you want to. Um, so it's just to see what have you started researching to help you prepare for the start of term. So we're going to launch that on your screens now. Um, it is multiple choice, so you can select as many things as you have started researching. And you'll be able to see those on your screen now. So you might have started looking at accommodation options, societies to join, support teams on campus, local shops, local public transport, cost of living, the visa application process, or something else as well. So I'll just give everybody a moment or so if you do want to take part in this, and then we'll have a look at the results together. Now, you might not have started researching anything yet. This webinar might be the first thing that you've started doing, and that's okay, there's still time, um, but it'd be good to give us an indication of what things people have started looking at. If you do select the other option, it'd be great to hear what other things you've been looking at in the chat as well. So please feel free to comment in there. Brilliant, and I can see lots of you are joining in. So I'm just gonna leave that open for another moment or so. So if you are filling in your answers now, um, please do get ready to press that submit button and then we'll check out the results together. OK, so I'm going to end the polling now. Brilliant. I can see lots of you are joining in there, which is really great to see everybody so engaged. Um, so just having a look at these results together, lots of people who took part have started looking at accommodation, cost of living and local public transport, which is absolutely brilliant because they really all go together. So if you are looking to live on campus or off campus, you need to take into account how much your bill is going to be, how much is your transport. We're going to run through that in the session as well. Also, lots of people have started researching the visa application process, which again is brilliant because that is what you um, are probably nearing doing now if you haven't started it already. And then a few looking at support teams, societies and local shops as well. So really good mix there, everybody. Well done. Um, now, we're just going to go back to the presentation and start taking you through some of the information to help you with your plans. So we do have a checklist. Again, this is available on the website. It's on the pre-arrival guide, so you don't need to worry about trying to write this down or screenshot it. Everything that we go through is available on there for you. So a few things that you need to make sure that you've got ready for coming to the university is your passport, your student visa or entry clearance, if that's applicable to you. You need your travel tickets, medical certificates, up-to-date vaccinations. So that'll be things like you might have been asked to make sure you've got your um, TB test certificate and make sure you've got your meningitis vaccination as well. Your travel insurance for the journey, your health insurance or European health insurance card, if that's applicable to you. 
and a mobile phone handset that is enabled to work with any mobile network provider. So this is quite important. So you do have a working phone once you land in the UK. So then if you're trying to meet the um, teams at the airport, if you're using our airport collection, or if you've booked a taxi, you'll be able to speak to them if you get lost as well. And we'll run through a bit more guidance on mobile phones in the session. And then you should also make sure that you've got your confirmation of acceptance of studies, your CAS, um, or your unconditional offer letter for those of you who might be on shorter courses and applying for a visit visa. Make sure you've got a copy of your decision letter, which explains how and where to collect your BRP card, if that's applicable to you. Your original examination certificates and English language test results with certified translations, if these aren't already in English. Also very important, make sure that you've got access to some funds to get you through those first few weeks while you're waiting to set up your UK bank account. If you do have access to a credit or debit card that's going to work while you're in the UK, that would be best. Most places use contactless payment now, so you wouldn't really need to have sterling to hand. But it might be you might feel more comfortable just having a bit of sterling with you or you could do travellers checks or a prepaid card as well. If you're a sponsored student, make sure you've got your proof of sponsorship. And if your parents are supporting your visa application finances, make sure you've got the proof of that with that signed letter of support and your original birth certificate, just evidencing that those people named are your parents. And again, very important, make sure you've got your accommodation all arranged and confirmed before you travel to the UK. Um, you will need the address of where you stay in. You might get asked for this when you come in through border control. So make sure that's all arranged. If you are looking to live on campus, you can actually pre-order a bedding pack. So you don't need to worry about traveling with bedding. That's going to be quite bulky for you. You can get that once you're in the UK. But if you are living on campus, do consider ordering a bedding pack. And the link to that is on, again on our pre-arrival guide. You can order from the online hearts shop. Great, thank you so much, Kat. We're now gonna have a look at airport guidance. So it's really important that you carry everything with you from the checklist that Kat just went through with us in your hand luggage so you know it's safe and secure at all times because these will be very important documents. It's also important that you check your airline for any luggage allowance, restrictions and regulations, so you know what you can and can't bring with you onto a flight. It's also important that you do not leave your bags unattended when you're at an airport, and this is for airports in your home country as well as airports in the UK, so stay with your bags at all times. Once you land in the UK, don't use it the gates at all. You need to have a stamp in your passport to evidence the date that you arrived in the UK. And you'll need this for your visa and also for the registration process. So when you're at the airport, the staff might try and guide you to use the e-gates, but you can just politely explain that you need to have a stamp in your passport and they'll then guide you to go through passport control. Great, thank you so much, Kat. We're now going to have a look at your journey to Hearts. So it's really important that you pre-plan your journey so you know how you're going to get from the airport to your accommodation safely. Now, we're very excited to announce that we will be providing free airport collection, and this will be from Heathrow Airport, and it will take you to our campuses during the arrivals weekend, um, which is the 20th and 21st of January. Now, there are luggage limitations when choosing this option, so you can bring with you onto the coach one small personal item bag, one hand luggage and one hold bag. All of these must have a handle, you'll need to have wheels on the cases and you must be able to lift and carry these onto the coach yourself because the staff won't be able to lift or carry anything for you, so please be aware of that too. Now, space are limited for our free airport collection, so you have to pre-book your slot. To be able to do that, you just go onto our pre-arrival web pages, complete the free airport collection booking form. You'll then receive an email confirming your space has been booked. Um, and then close to the time, you'll receive an email with the full instructions on where to meet the team at Heathrow Airport. Now, we would recommend printing out this email um, because it will actually give you a map and give you full instructions on where to meet the team, just in case you don't have um, any Wi-Fi access on your phone when you land in the UK. 
Now, if the spaces fill up or if you're not arriving during that weekend, don't worry, you can pre-book a taxi. You'll need to do this at least 72 hours before you're due to, to travel to the UK, um, just so you know it's fully booked and confirmed. To be able to do that, um, we've got three different tax services printed on screen and you can just email them, provide them with your details, your flight details and your accommodation address. They can then provide you with a quote to tell you how much the journey will cost because you'll need to have cash to cover the journey. But it should be between 50 and £135, just depending on which airport you're arriving in and where your accommodation is. You'll also need to make sure that you can provide a mobile number that will work in the UK so that the taxi driver can locate you safely at the airport and take you to your accommodation. Now, if you don't want to pre-book a taxi, that's completely fine. You can use public transport. You just need to make sure that you have fully researched how you're going to get from the airport to your accommodation. And there is actually guidance on our pre-arrival web pages that tells you how to get from our four closest airports um, to uh, the campus as well. So you can have a look through and just make sure you've thoroughly researched that. If you are arriving at Heathrow, then there is actually the 724 bus that will take you from Heathrow to Hatfield. It, you can just check to see how long it will take, but that's an option for you as well. Great, thank you. So we're now going to have a look at on-campus accommodation. So if you haven't already arranged your accommodation, this is the slide for you. It's absolutely crucial that you arrange your accommodation before you travel to the UK. We would always recommend students live on campus where possible. The on-campus accommodation at the University of Hertfordshire is incredible. They've spent over £120 million on our student accommodation development. You can uh, walk to your lectures, so you'll always be five minutes away from your lectures, so there wouldn't be any commute costs, so you'd actually save money when living on campus. And you can actually live on either College Lane or De Havilland, regardless of where your lectures will be, so you've got lots of options. And there is a variety of room styles um, that you can select as well, um, and you can check out those on our web pages too. Now, all of your bills, your Wi-Fi and your contents insurance are all included within your on-campus accommodation cost. So there's no hidden fees sorry, or charges when choosing to live on campus. Um, and there's no need for a UK guarantor when you live on campus as well. So it's a very simple and straightforward process. It's very safe living on campus as well. You would have 24 seven support all year round. So if you lock yourself out of your room at any point, if you start to feel unwell, or if there's um, a situation that you need help with, you will have instant access to support. You also have the option to live with friends when you're living on campus. And within the application form, there's actually a box where you can include your friends details and their student ID number. So just make sure you know their eight digit student ID number. And just to let you all know, there is a dedicated postgraduate area on the de Havilland campus too. Um, these rooms are limited, so we would just recommend that you uh, book the room as quickly as possible. Um, but as I said, you can check out all of the details of all of the different rooms on our web pages. But we'll now watch a video to find out a little bit more about our on-campus accommodation facilities. Just while this video is waiting to load everybody, um, we do have some room tour videos as well on the YouTube channel for Heart. So if you do want to watch any student room tours, um, please feel free to go and check those out on the YouTube Studying channel. at Hearts offers a great student experience and living on campus adds so much more. A wide choice of rooms are available, including en-suites and self-contained studios, all with bills included. You'll make lifelong friends in the communal spaces, whether cooking a meal in the kitchen for your flatmates or relaxing in the modern common rooms. 
You'll also be close to everything our campuses have to offer, from the library and your lectures, through to our great sports facilities and on-campus bar and nightclub. Support is available 24-7 from resident assistants, so there's always someone on hand if you need anything. Living on campus offers such a rewarding experience, and we can't wait to welcome you here. Now, alongside living on campus, which, as Jess said, we'd always recommend for you just because it's so convenient to get to lectures. It's going to help you budget because all the bills are included. We know that some of you, however, might be looking to live off campus. So we're going to go through a bit of guidance around that. Um, now, we do recommend you live as close to campus as possible. Um, so ideally in the Hatfield area so that you can still walk to the campus and you're not relying on public transport because that's going to come with additional commute time and cost as well. You do need to live within a two hour commute or maximum 30 miles from campus. Now, this is the maximum. We would always recommend live as close as you can because that is quite a long commute if you're doing two hours to campus and two hours back every day that you need to be in. So it's not going to help you want to get to your lectures easily. So that's why I recommend live on campus or live in the Hatfield area so that you can just walk to your lectures. Make it easy for yourself. This is the main reason you're coming to the UK. Just make sure that everything is accessible for you that you need to get to. Do be mindful of scams as well. Um, so overcrowding is against the law in the UK. If you are getting messages on social media or WhatsApp from people advertising uh, sort of cheap off-campus accommodation, things that look too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. And once you arrive in the UK, that accommodation might not be what's been sold to you. So what we recommend is if you are looking for off-campus accommodation, go through the PAL website. That's on the screen there, pal-org.uk, uh, sorry, pal-online.org.uk. Now, what PAL is, is um, it's something that the university has set up with the local council. And it's a website where local landlords can display their properties. All the landlords on there have been vetted, they're trusted landlords. The images that you'll see online match how the property looks in real life. The properties are safe and well maintained. There's no hidden costs and no overcrowding as well. And you know that everything is going to work in the property. So please do check out that website and only go for PAL accredited properties. Um, you might also need to have a UK guarantor if you're looking for off-campus accommodation. Um, now, PAL use companies like Housing Hand, so do your research as well. See if that's something that you would like to go through. And check the routes and prices for the commute that you're going to be doing. So the property that you're getting, is it on the Uno bus network? Um, how much is that ticket going to cost you for a week? Um, how long is the commute going to cost you? Is there a bus that is scheduled early morning or late evening enough for you to get in and out for your lectures? If you're looking to live somewhere where you're going to be getting the train to Hatfield Station and then the bus, you need to make sure you've had a look at the train timetables on National Rail. Um, do be mindful that if you are getting in for those earlier morning um, trains, then you're going to be looking at peak prices as well because in the UK prices do change depending on what time you're traveling. So make sure that you have looked at all that and you don't get caught out once you've signed up to a property. Now, just a bit more information regarding cost of living. So this information it is available on our website under the cost of living page. So you can have a look at that in a bit more detail. Um, but you will need to show £1,023 per month for up to nine months for your student visa application. However, your actual living expenses may vary. This is going to be depending on your personal spending habits, um, the prices of the properties that you've signed up to, if you've got to have those commute costs. Um, we estimate that you can expect to pay between 900 to about £1,600 per month to cover things like your accommodation, your bills, your food and other living costs as well. So we, if we just have a look at the table together, we've estimated that per month you're probably going to spend around £200 on food bill. Now, again, this is going to vary depending on how many brand items are you wanting to buy versus supermarket owned brand. Are you cooking meals from scratch or are you eating out more? So it is going to vary depending on how you 
want to live. You then need to look at your entertainment. So again, how often are you wanting to go out with friends, maybe go to the cinema, go to gigs, other things like that. Your travel costs, as we talked about on the previous slide, that's going to vary quite a bit as well, depending on if you need to pay any commute costs. Um, so just for example, a weekly UNO bus ticket traveling between Luton and Hatfield costs £29, whereas a day return train from London to Hatfield was £17.90 just for the day. Um, so we looked at these costs earlier this year. So do do your research and check the current costs as well. Um, your rent. So again, that's going to vary probably between about 500 to about 966 pounds. This is going to be dependent on the location and the quality of the accommodation. Your utility bills, this is something that could vary quite a bit as well. If you are living on campus, they're going to be zero because they're included in your accommodation fee. Um, but if you're living off campus and you don't have the bills included, we estimate around 80 pounds per month. But It'll depend if you're splitting bills with flatmates, what's the size of the accommodation, how often do you want to have things like the heating on, that's all going to increase the bills for you as well, so you need to make sure you've budgeted for that. Um, and things like TV license, if you plan to watch TV in the UK, you need to ensure the residence has a TV license, so you might split that cost with flatmates, but if you're living on campus, um, we actually cover the TV license for you in the communal areas, so it's just another less thing that you need to think about as well. And then moving on to paying your fees, I can see there were some questions about this already in the Q&A, which is brilliant that you're thinking about this already. But you must ensure you've paid your fees by the liability dates um, as failure to do so could lead to academic consequences. So things like you might have your access to your study materials revoked. You might end up being withdrawn from the course. So just make sure that you do stick to those liability dates. So at the moment, for everybody who's joining us in January, you need to make sure that you've paid 65 percent of your tuition fees by the 5th of February. Now that means the funds need to be received by the university by these deadline dates. And then you need to have paid 100% of that year's tuition fee by the 6th of May as well. So maybe keep a note of these in your diary, put reminders on the lead up so you can make sure that you've made those payments in time. If you are in a position to pay for your full year's tuition fee in full by registration, you can actually get a £500 full payment discount. So if you are in that position, that's a really good way to save a bit of extra money as well. So we would recommend that. If you are a sponsored student, your sponsor needs to provide proof that they've agreed to pay these costs as well. So make sure that you've got all your evidence in. Now, paying your fees, you can pay online, you can pay via bank transfer, or you can pay by credit or debit card. And you can check out those payment methods on our website as well. Always make sure that you are making your payments directly to the university. You can check our bank details on our website. And if you're ever unsure, do contact somebody as well. Um, don't be making payments through third parties because then that could put you at risk of scams as well. Um, also, just be mindful you won't be able to make your tuition fee payments in cash. Um, it's not safe for you to be carrying large amounts of cash around the campus anyway. We wouldn't recommend it. So just make sure that you're paying through an online or credit or debit card method. Um, but that leads us on to a bit more information about your personal finances. So I'll pass back to Jess. Thank you so much, Kat. Yes, we're now going to have a look at bank accounts and phone sims. So we'll look at bank accounts first of all. So it's really important that you undertake your research. There are lots of different banks uh, that you can consider. We've got lots of different high street banks and bank accounts. There are online and digital banks too. So just make sure that you're checking to see if there are any hidden fees or charges associated with any of the accounts you're interested in. Now, each bank will have a different application process. So it might be an online application form that you need to complete, or you might need to physically go into one of the banks um, and complete an um, application form and an in-person process as well. But most of the high street banks will need to see your original passport, your BRP card, proof of UK address, and also your letter of induction from the university. So you'll be able to apply for your letter of 
induction once you've completed the registration process. And to be able to do that, you just go onto the Ask Hearts website, you complete a form and it's emailed to you within about 15 minutes. So it's a very quick process to get that once you've registered. Now, ideally, you would have access to a bank card that you can use in the UK once you've arrived here. Um, so just make sure that, that you've considered that and you've undertaken your research. Part of your research, we would recommend that you have a look at the company WISE. This is a company that offers borderless accounts for students, so you don't need to evidence proof of UK address to open up an account with them. We'd also recommend that you have a look at Monzo and Starling. These are both digital banks, so you don't need to physically go into a bank branch to open up an account with those two. Undertake your research and find the best option for you. Exactly the same with phone sims. Do your research. There are lots of different options out there that you can consider. You can have sim only, pay as you go or a contract with a handset. It is usually cheaper to buy your own phone and uh, find a SIM only or pay as you go contract. And you can actually apply for a SIM online. So it's a very simple and straightforward process. If you did want a contract with a handset, you'd need to undertake a credit check. And to be able to do that, you'd need to have a UK bank account and proof of UK address. So that might be something you consider later down the line. Just to let you all know, free SIMs will be available on campus and these will be available from the Welcome Desk and the International Information Fair. And they'll be available from GIFGAF and the Bara. And these are two companies that you know, we'd recommend you research because they offer very competitive SIM only prices. Great. Oh, I think we've missed a few slides there, Kat. So I think we're gonna have a look at food and drink next in the UK. Let me just go back to those. Sorry, everybody. Thank you so much, Kat. I'll start telling you all about food and drink in the UK. So we're really lucky in the UK. Our food and drink is inspired by lots of different cultures and cuisines all from across the globe. Um, so you will be able to try out lots of different foods um, when you're in the UK. Um, and so I would strongly recommend fish and chips and a roast in They're two of my favourites. Um, and hopefully you'll find your favourites here too. But just to let you all know, tap water is safe to drink in the UK. So that's just one less thing for you to worry about. And we're really lucky in Hatfield. We've got lots of different supermarkets, all within walking distance of our campuses. Um, and we've got some specialty food stores, too. So during orientation, you can take a trip to the local supermarket. You can learn the route. You can try out the self-service tills and you can stock up on those everyday essentials. And then we also have on-campus premier shops on both of our campuses, again, where you can stock up on everyday essentials. They offer a really wide range of different products, um, so a really good option for you there. They also have another great option where you can actually put cash onto the UPay app in store uh, and then you can spend that money whilst on campus, just if you're waiting for your bank card and you can use the code hearts to do that. And the team in store can support you to do that as well. Um, but just to let you know, our campuses are mainly cashless. So that is a really good option if you haven't been able to get your bank card in time. Now, in Hatfield and Hertfordshire, we're really lucky. We've got lots of lovely restaurants, but in London in particular, that's only 25 minutes away from Hatfield by train, there are incredible restaurants all from across the globe. There's amazing street food markets and specialty food stores too. So you will be able to find a taste of home there to help you get settled into your new life here in the UK. And to continue to help you get uh, prepared for your new life in the UK, we're going to have a look at British weather. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, British weather can be very unpredictable, but we'll give you a very broad overview. So our autumn and winter ranges from September to March. So because you'll be arriving in January, um, or maybe a little bit before January as well, it will be winter so it will be cold it will be wet it will be windy you'll definitely need an umbrella you'll need to make sure that you've got warm clothes you've got a waterproof coat you've got jeans you've got boots trainers you've got jumpers a scarf a hat gloves 
Um, and it's a really good idea to wear layers because when you're walking to your lectures, it will be very cold outside. But then once you get to your lectures, it will be nice and warm. So layers will make sure that you feel very comfortable. Now, you know, you can bring some things with you and you can remember as well, we've got the gallery, which is within walking distance of both our campuses. And there you can buy some warm clothes. You can buy, you know, hats and gloves and scarves and umbrellas from there as well. Now, spring can be absolutely beautiful, really sunny days, quite warm, or there's been times where we've had a little bit of snow during spring or it could be really rainy. So again, that can be very unpredictable. And then summer ranges from June to August. Now, summer can be very, very hot in the UK. Um, last summer, so not some we just had the one before um, in 2021, Hatfield actually got to 40 degrees um, on some days so it was very hot very dry very humid but there may also be some rainy days too so just make sure that you're staying hydrated that you're not spending too long in the sun that you're checking the weather before you leave your accommodation as well um, and that you take that umbrella with you if you need it to but we'll now move on to cats find out all about some things you can get involved in online thanks jess um, so, yeah, there are a few things that you can do now to help you have the best start at Hearts. So the university has developed a free online module called Getting Ready to Study at Hearts. So this is available linked on our pre-arrival guide. We'll also be emailing it around to you as well. Um, but if you can see in the screenshot there on the slide, that's what it'll look like. You don't need to log in. Once you have got your student information, you can log in if you want to, but it is open access, so you don't actually have to log in to access these learning materials. Um, you can just click on the menu there that you can see on screen where it says units, and then you can scroll through all the different things, press into each unit, and it'll open up with a lot more information on there for you. So um, there's some video tours, so you can learn your way around the LRCs. Um, there's also some top tip videos from previous international students about things they wish they'd known before they traveled to the UK so you can take some tips from them. You can also learn your way around the heart systems like StudyNet, Canvas, the Ask Heart search engine as well so there's some video guides on those so you can get used to those. There's tips for academic success as well. So we know that studying in the UK might be quite different to the type of studying that you've done before with the different referencing methods, how you go about doing your own reading and research. So check those out and it's going to help give you a bit of an idea. There's health and well-being guidance. So there's various teams on campus, which I'm going to run through in the next slide. But make sure that you are familiar with those and you reach out to them at any point if you need them. And there's the support signposting as well. So the link to this module is on screen now, but as I say, we will email it round to you and it's also available on the pre-arrival guide website pages as well. Now, just going into the support teams on campus. So we do have a lot of different teams who will be available to support you once you're enrolled as a student. So we have the careers and employment support team, They'll actually offer you support from once you enrol right up to four years after graduation. So make sure that you're aware of them, what they do, use them at any point if you need them so they can help you with job search, your career aspirations. They can do things like uh, interview preparation practice, help you with your CV and cover letter writing. Um, there's also some special platforms as well where you'll actually be able to search for jobs online, such as Student Circus, which is specially made for international students um, and other platforms as well. We then have the student immigration team. So if at any point during your time at Hearts you've got questions around your visa um, or immigration status, you can speak to that team and they can help you. If you're coming for an undergraduate degree with us and you're looking to progress to postgraduate, they can also help you with that new visa application as well. We then have the wellbeing team. So if at any point you want to speak to them, if you're struggling at all, do reach out. That's what they're there for. Um, and the Dean of Students team can also support you with various things as well. Um, so the Dean of Students, as well as offering support, they will also run some fun activities for you throughout the year. Um, so do check those out. Make sure you're familiar with them and the various things that they can assist with. 
There's then academic English and study skills workshops. So these are usually run around the start of term just to help you get to grips with things like academic English. So writing styles that might be different to what you've used before, study skills workshops. So that referencing and researching that we mentioned. So do check those out as well. They are free to join and as many students are welcome just to help you get the best start you can um, with your degree. We then have an on-campus medical centre. We do recommend you sign up to the medical centre once you're registered at the university because then if you do need any health care during your time at Hearts, you've got easy access right on campus as well. Then there's the Students' Union, so as well as all the fun activities that they do, so they'll be putting on a lot of events for you throughout the year. Um, they're also the voice of the students. So if you do have anything that you want extra advice from extra guidance or if you need support, you can go and speak to the, the students union team and then they can actually voice that up for you through the different channels at the university. We then have our chaplaincy. Um, so we have two multi-faith spaces on campus. We have one on DHAV and our larger one on College Lane, which is the key. Everybody is welcome there, people of all faiths and no faith. So please do go there, use the chaplaincy. It's a great place if you want time to reflect um, or for prayer or if you just want to meet some other people as well. So please do use that. And then there's the Ask Hearts online search engine. So get into the habit of using this now. It's a really great resource. So it's just like any other online search engine, but it's all things hearts. So for example, say if you've got a question about how do I get my um, UK bank account, you can go on there, type bank account, and it'll bring up the related articles for you. Usually there's step-by-step -step guidance and links to any forms or anything else that you might need to fill in as well. So do save that to your bookmarks on your browser or your phone. But if you want to read more about the support teams on campus, do check out the web pages. And like we say, make sure that you're familiar with them, reach out to them, use them at any time during your time at Hearts. And now we're just going to run through a bit of guidance for registration. So I know some of you have been asking for this in the chat as well. So again, brilliant that you're so organised with everything. Um, so there's some things that you can do before you arrive to the UK. So around 40 days before your course start date, the university system will start triggering emails to people, which will contain uh, your welcome email, your username, a temporary password, and it'll invite you to start setting up your Hertfordshire account. You need to log in and update your password. Um, you should also look at setting up your multi-factor authentication. So anybody who doesn't know what that is, um, it's just like you would if you do online banking, where you usually have an app on your phone that you then have to approve if it's yourself trying to log into certain secure platforms. So set that up as well. Um, if possible, we do recommend that you bring your phone handset to the UK that you set up your MFA on. That's just going to make it easier for you to continue to access the system once you arrive in the UK. So if it's possible, bring your same phone handset. As Jess said earlier, we'll be giving out free UK SIMs at the university. So then you can just swap your SIM once you've got that UK one. Now, with multi-factor authentication, you do need to get the app version. So the Microsoft one, is the one that's recommended by the university. At the minute, there will be some options where you can do sort of text message verification or phone call verification, um, but we strongly recommend get the app because that's gonna help you keep access to it once you travel to the UK. Now, Hertfordshire has set up special guidance on MFA on Ask Heart, so check that out as well if you're ever stuck um, and do contact somebody if you are struggling or if you're locked out of your MFA. Um, once you've set all that up, then you'll get access to your registration portal. So before you travel to the UK, this is where you need to set up your online portion of registration. So that just involves checking that your details are correct. You'll see with the little screen grabs there, anything that is to do will be displayed in an orange box. Anything that you've completed will be displayed in a green box. So it's all colour coded to make it easy for you to follow. And you'll also be invited to upload a photo for your heart student ID as well. So you can just follow along step by step guidance. If you do get stuck at any point with online registration, there is a video guide that's linked on the university website and we'll 
be sending that round in an email as well. So you can just follow along step by step with that. And then once you get to the UK, um, you'll also have a face to face registration appointment. Now, you'll be able to book your appointment after you've completed those online steps of registration. So when you log back in after completing that, you'll then see a new box appear, which gives you the option to book your face to face appointment. Um, book your appointment as soon as you can after you've arrived in the UK. Obviously, give yourself a bit of time to settle. So maybe the day after you've landed, um, just in case you have any flight delays or anything. But make sure that you have got your appointment sorted before the deadline for registration for your course. So your deadline will be available on the pre-arrival guide start dates page and we'll have emailed you a link to that out as well. Um, the first appointments will be available from the 9th of January and you'll need to take some documents with you. So a list of what will be needed will be showing in your registration portal as well. So you can just check through that list. But during your appointment, the Hearts teams will check your documents. They'll provide you with your BRP card if you've had this sent to campus and you'll be able to get your student ID card as well. So you can start using that for any discounts that you need to get. Um, but now I'll pass to Jess will give you a bit more info about BRP. Right, thank you so much, Katz. So yes, let's have a look at BRP collection. So we would always recommend students to choose to pick up their BRP card from our campuses. To be able to do that, during your visa application, you need to use the alternative collection location code that's printed on the screen there. And that just means your BRP card is sent to our student immigration team and they're based in Hutton Hub on College Lane campus. Your BRP card would then be available during your face to face registration appointment. So you wouldn't need a separate BRP collection appointment at all. It would be a very simple and straightforward process and the one that we'd always recommend. If you didn't use the alternative collection location code during your visa application, that means your BRP card will be sent to a post office. Our closest post office is in the Hatfield Town Centre and it's within walking distance of both of our campuses. You don't usually need an appointment to collect your BRP card from the post office, but you do need to be aware that it can be very busy at a post office, especially at uh, lunchtime. Um, so you just need to make sure that you've provided enough time to collect it. If you are collecting your BRP card from the post office, you must collect this before your registration appointment. If you go to a registration appointment and you haven't collected your BRP card from the post office, you will be turned away and asked to book another slot because that will be required for your registration process. So this is one of the reasons why we say collecting your BRP card from our campus is the most ideal solution because that will be available during your registration appointment. Um, but that's just something for you all to be aware of. OK, we're now going to have a look at engagement and attendance. So it's absolutely crucial that you are ready to start your course on your course start date. So this date will be stated on your CAS letter and also on our pre-arrival web pages. So make sure you've familiarised yourself with that date. Your engagement with your studies is monitored. So as soon as you've registered, you need to be attending your face to face sessions. And because if your engagement falls below 80 percent, you may be withdrawn from your programme. You'll need to swipe your ID card into your lectures each day and you must only ever swipe your own ID card. The lecturers will be undertaking spot checks to ensure students only ever swipe their own ID card. So you must be aware of that. And this is why we say it's crucial to live on campus or within Hatfield or the local area so that you know that you'll have a very quick and easy commute. You can attend all of your face to face sessions, all of your lectures, your tutorials, your group work sessions, any last minute sessions. And you can use the Learning Resource Centre and different resources we have on campus to support you to meet your full potential while studying with us here at Hearts. OK, and we're now going to move on to our final poll. So we want to find out which school of study you'll be joining. So I'm going to launch this poll. OK, and I hope that you can all see that on screen. So I want to know which school of study you're joining. Are you going to be joining Hertfordshire Business School, Hertfordshire Law School, the School of Creative Arts, the School of Education, the School of Health and Social Work? 
the School of Life and Medical Sciences, or the School of Physics, Engineering and Computer Science. This is optional for you to join in, but it would be really nice to see which school of study you're joining because there might be some classmates on the webinar today. Um, so we're just finding out, I can see lots of you are joining in, which is great to see. Fantastic, I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results with you all now. So I can see we've got lots of you joining Hertfordshire Business School. We've got quite a few for Hertfordshire Law School as well. The School of Physics, Engineering and Computer Science, I think, might be the winner. So we've got lots of students here with us joining that School of Study. Um, and we've got some students as well joining the School of Health and Social Work and the School of Life and Medical Sciences. Um, and the School of Education too. So lots of different students joining us from all different um, walks of the, the schools we have at the university. So that's great to see. Thank you everybody for jo joining in with that one. Okay, we'll now move on to have a look at some of the things you can do during your first week with us. So during your first week, there's going to be lots of different exciting events you can get involved in for orientation and freshers. The events calendar is printed on screen there. I would recommend regularly checking the events calendar because lots of new events are added quite regularly and you can get involved in as many events as you like. The more the merrier, I say, because it really does help you get settled into your new life here at the university. It will help you get settled um, into our community. It will help you make new friends as well. And it will help you learn more about the university too. So a really great option. There are also some incredible clubs and societies you can get involved in, and Kat will talk about that um, in the next slide, so she'll talk us through that. And if you're sporty, you can get involved in a heart squad team too, so lots of options for you to be very sociable. Now, something you can do in your home country, you don't have to do it during your first week, is download an absolutely brilliant app, and it's called the Hearts Mobile app. And I found this really useful when I first joined the university. It will help you find your way around the campuses, so you can actually put in your lecture room number, and it will show you where it is on campus. You can also view the local bus stops, and it sends you notifications too, like if we have a snow day at the university. Now, during your first week for your organisation, you must complete your face to face registration, get fully registered. You can check out your timetable. You can familiarise yourself with all of the services available on offer here at the University of Hertfordshire and you can get involved in those events as well. But we'll now move on to hear from Kat all about some of the exciting activities, events and days out that you can get involved in. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jess. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of things that you can do. I'm sure those of you who have started your research might be familiar with some of these. But um, during your time at Hearts, there'll be various trips that you can join. So usually the SU or the Dean of Students will put on some fantastic trips. Keep an eye on that events calendar that Jess mentioned so that you can book onto these if you want to. But last time they did trips to IKEA so students could pick up some um, homely items from there. There's also trips into London. So this is a great way if it's your first time going into London, you can go on one of the organised trips so that um, it feels a bit more comfortable. If you don't know where you're going, you also have your transport covered and a group to show you around as well. And then also trips to St Albans and more. Um, we do recommend if you have a particular interest, check out the clubs and societies of the SU. So there's hundreds of societies, the sport clubs. So it's a great way to meet people who've got similar interests to you as well. Um, you've then got Hatfield. So right on your doorstep is the Galleria, which is the shopping mall, which also has a cinema in there as well. Lots of restaurants. Um, there's also bars. Um, in the Hatfield area too and some local food shops so do check those out once you've learnt your way around you'll you'll know where all your favourite spots are. St Albans is the nearest city so you can reach that on the Uno bus network um, great for shopping again lots of restaurants and bars there's also a big park which is lovely in the summer if you wanted to have a walk around there with your friends or maybe take a picnic and there's the cathedral as well, which is where you'll be graduating. But you can actually go and have a wander around the cathedral um, and check that out as well. 
And then, of course, London. So there's loads of things to do in London, lots of museums, art galleries, many of which are free as well. So do take advantage of that during your time at Hearts. Um, you might also be interested in the theatres, so going to see a show and lots of sites to walk around as well. Um, so as we've said, keep an eye on the events calendar. It does get constantly updated throughout the year. So again, maybe save it down to your favourites and just remind yourself to check back what's going on over the upcoming weeks so you can book on to anything that you might be interested in. Now, guidance for getting a job and work experience. So on your student visa, you can work up to 20 hours per week in term time. Um, there are some part time jobs available on campus, such as some students will work as student ambassadors or unibody assistants or doing campus tours. Now, I do want to set your expectations. These are in quite high demand just because of the convenience with them being so easily accessible from campus. So most students will need to look outside of the university for their part time jobs. Um, there are jobs obviously in Hatfield as well, but again, because they're so convenient and easy to get to, some students will find they might have to go into the neighbouring towns. Um, but make sure that you have a good study work life balance. The reason you're coming to the UK is for your studies. That should be the number one priority for you. Um, and your maintenance funds should cover you for your actual living costs as well. So you shouldn't be relying on work. Um, so make sure that you have that good study life balance with studies always coming first. When you are looking for part time jobs, though, as I mentioned before, there's the careers portal with Handshake and the student circus platforms where you'll be able to see those jobs on there. And the team can help you with CV writing and interview practice as well. And we're at the last slide now, everybody, and then we'll be answering some of your questions live. Um, so staying safe in the UK is just about being sensible, being aware of your surroundings. Don't do anything that you wouldn't do in your home country, such as carrying large amounts of cash. Most places in the UK do accept the debit and credit card payments, so there's no need to carry large amounts of cash with you. Be aware of potential scams. Only make tuition and accommodation payments directly to the university. Don't pay through any third parties. Make sure everything is legitimate. Um, don't alter any official documents or emails provided by the university as well. So if you do receive something and you think there's an error on it, contact the team or the person who has issued that document to you to let them know. And if there is an error, they will issue you with a corrected one. Don't alter it yourself. Um, just be sensible, be aware of your surroundings, make sure your phone is always charged. So this is really important for when you are new to the UK, because then you can use the apps on your phone. So if you get lost, you've got your Maps apps or what three words and you can phone somebody as well for help. Always plan your journey home in advance. So especially if you're going to St Albans or London, you know, what's the last train back to home? What's the last bus back? How long it's going to take you to get back to the train station? Just make sure that you have planned things like that so you don't leave yourself stranded anywhere. And respect other people's cultures. So we're quite a diverse multicultural society in the UK. You might see customs that you're not used to and it's just mindful to be respectful of everybody as well. But just be mindful if you are a smoker in the UK, um, you need to be 10 metres away from the buildings on campus. Um, and be aware of who you need to contact if you do need help. So if at any point during your time at Hearts, um, if you do need any support or assistance, um, please do reach out to our wellbeing team. On the pre-arrival guide, we also have um, contact numbers. So the on-campus security, emergency numbers in the UK as well. So please do reach out to them if at any point you need them and save them down to your phone. Um, if you do need any help at any point, then you've got that there. But now what we're going to do, thank you so much for listening to us, everybody. Um, we're going to go to your questions now in the Q&A and we'll start answering some of those live. Great. Thank you so much, Kat. And thank you, everybody, for all your amazing questions. It's been brilliant. I can see a few students have asked about the face to face appointments and how they book those and also about BRP collection, too. So I'll first talk about your face 
to face appointment, how you book that. You will need to complete your online registration, first of all, and you will be able to do that from next week onwards. So just keep an eye on your emails um, and you'll be able to complete that face to face. Uh, sorry, the online registration appointment. Then you can book your face to face appointment on the same portal. So on the same registration portal. So you're joining instruction area. Um, and once you've booked that, then, you know, during your visa application process, we'd always recommend using the alternative collection location code um, that we showed you earlier. And then that means your BRP card will be available during your registration appointment. But if not, if you didn't use that code, then your BRP card will be sent to the post office and you'd need to collect that before your registration appointment. So we'd always recommend using the alternative collection location code for your BRP card because then your face to face appointment will be a very simple simple and straightforward process. Brilliant. Thank you, Jess. Um, now, I can see that somebody's asked regarding staying on campus and the situation with the heating. So this is a really good an uh, question. So somebody said, um, how often will the heating come on in my room? And also, do the rooms have air conditioning for the summer heat that Jess mentioned? So the heating in the rooms, um, You'll be able to check with your accommodation manager regarding, you know, if, if you do want this uh, raised or not, you'll all have heater in your room. So you'll actually be able to change that. If you're getting too hot, you can turn it down. If you're cold, you can turn it up. Um, there isn't air conditioning in the actual rooms themselves, but we do have air conditioning on the campus. So in things like the, um, the LRC, it's usually climate controlled. So it will usually be a bit cooler. Um, but usually in the UK, it's it's uncommon for any residential places to have air conditioning. Usually you just get that in kind of shops, um, central buildings or sometimes in some hotels as well. Perfect. Thank you, Kat. I've got a student and they've asked, are there still jobs available on campus? So part time jobs, are they still available for students on campus that are joining in the January intake? There will be some part time jobs available still. Um, and what you can do is you can speak to the student union team. You can speak to the careers team as well and have a look for some of those part time jobs. There are also part time jobs available in Hatfield in the local area. I would also add you must ensure one that you're coming to study in the UK to focus on your studies fully. Your studies are your absolute priority when you're here and you need to make sure that you're attending all of your lectures and available to attend all of your lectures as well. So please be aware of that. There is no guarantee that you'll be able to get a part time job when you arrive in the UK. So you need to make sure that you have got all the funds available to cover your tuition fees and your living expenses without the need for a part time job. I mean, Kat went through the cost of living in the UK as well. So it's absolutely crucial that you've got enough funds to keep yourself covered so that you're safe in the UK. Um, but there are some part time jobs available still. Brilliant. Thank you, Jess. Um, now, I've got a question here from someone who's um, saying that they're just thinking about kind of safety and security. Is it advisable to stay indoors when it's dark? Is it safe to go outside between kind of 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. or before 6 a.m.? Um, so, yes, it is. We usually there'll be quite a lot of people around campus in the evenings anyway. So if you are staying on campus, you'll see a lot of people there. The buildings will still be open. The LRC is open 24 hours a day. Um, but yes, it is safe to walk around at night time. I would recommend just be mindful, though. Like I've said, don't be walking around kind of with your headphones in, not really paying attention to anything. Lots of expensive items out on display. But if you're just walking around as normal, you know, you're, you're aware of your surroundings um, and you're not kind of having a lot of cash that's visible, then you'd be fine. But we do have a great security team on campus. Um, so, yes, you, you will be safe on the campus as well. Great. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, I've got um, a few students asking um, about potential visa delays. So I've, I've got some saying, sorry, some people saying that they're a little bit worried that there might be a delay with their visa. Um, and, you know, what will happen if they don't meet their deadlines? So the last date for you to register is stated on your CAS letter, as is your course start date. So first of all, familiarise yourself with that date. If you think there's a chance that you can't arrive and be fully 
fully registered by that deadline, then you'll need to contact us. So you can email us to our main email address, which is international at hearts.ace.uk, and also tell your in-country representatives and your agents as well. And then what we can do is we can advise you um, on what to do next. We are very hopeful that you can meet the deadlines for your course, um, but otherwise you may need to defer to the September intake, um, but we can keep you posted on the advice that we can give you individually too. Brilliant. Thank you, Jess. And I think we've got time for one more question, everybody. So I'm so sorry if we haven't been able to answer yours live. Um, but last question, I can see somebody's asking about um, the fee payments. Is it possible to pay in installments like a monthly basis? So they're just thinking about those liability dates that we ran through earlier. Now, um, when you do join Hearts, once you're fully registered, you will be contacted by the finance team just to go through what's due for you, what you've paid so far. Um, so you you can pay in smaller payment amounts but you must have paid that full amount for that liability date by that date's deadline so no matter how much you're paying in one go or multiple smaller payments you need to make sure that you have met that full payment that's required by the liability deadline so that you don't fall behind or into arrears with your university tuition fees. If you're ever not sure, then you'll be able to speak to the finance team once you've started at Hearts and make sure that you are in line with the payments that you're gonna be making. Um, now, if, you, if we haven't been able to answer your question, I'm so sorry, everything that we have covered and more is available on the pre-arrival guide on the website pages. We'll also continue to send you out some top tips in our emails over the coming weeks as well, so keep an eye out for those. If you do have any further questions about the various support teams on campus, we have done some Instagram lives with these teams over the last few weeks and also over the summer as well. So you can go back and watch those on our reels if you do want to find out more. Uh, for example, I know that some people in the chat were asking about kind of the gym and heart squad. So you can watch their live or the careers and employment teams live session as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, everybody. The contact details for us are here. So any questions that we haven't been able to answer that you can't find the answer to on the pre-arrival guide, you can email us at international at hearts.ac.uk. Once you're a registered student, if you do have any queries, you can speak to Dean of Students at hearts.ac.uk. And for anything urgent, you can give our team in the UK a call as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Um, and we wish you all an enjoyable trip to the UK and we can't wait to see you in January. Thank you.